Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about a project called Meshtastic and how it is using inexpensive radios, like this one, to create off-grid texting networks. Let's jump in. So I'm here on Meshtastic.org and this has an explanation of what Meshtastic is. Basically it creates a mesh network between the radios that allows people to communicate with each other. So even if you didn't have cell phone reception, these radios will be able to communicate and allow you to text other people in your group. So this is good for outdoor sports where cell coverage is limited, uh, camping. Uh, I think the guy that created this actually used it for paragliding because it's hard to communicate with each other. When you land, you want to meet up and stuff. So people in the air, you could bounce those texts off of the people that were still in the air and get it to the other people on the ground. So that's kind of cool. Um, and these use something called LoRa, which is long range communication. Um, and then you can see a couple of different types of radios here, and uh, basically that, that's the gist of it. It's just a way to text each other over long distances without any other kind of infrastructure. These, these radios create a mesh network between themselves that is the infrastructure that allows you to text. So you can connect one of these radios to your phone via Bluetooth, and you can download the app for Android, and it'll be like a texting app but you don't need the app. You can just do it off of these screens. They will display anything, uh, any texts coming through. So even if you had a couple of these that were extras that were part of the network, but people didn't have their phones on them, they could at least read the information that's being passed from person to person and they'd be in the loop. It's kind of cool. So this is a very young project. Um, it's maybe a year old. Uh, you can see here they've, they've been consistently updating this. And so, yeah, let's go over the radio now and check that out. So here's an example of a non-GPS radio. These can be purchased for 10 to $15. They're available on Amazon and AliExpress. Um, and basically you have an LCD screen here. You have a micro USB port here, um, a reset button right here, which will restart the board. And then there's a, a programming button here or a cycle button, which will go through, it'll cycle the screen through different pieces of information. Um, it comes with this antenna, which is extremely cheap, but it works if you have nothing else. Uh, and then here's our connector here. It just pushes down onto this. And then on the back side, the only thing of interest here is this connector here, which is for a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. So that's kind of cool. You can plug in a battery here. And then this actually does have a charging circuit. So when you plug it into the micro USB, into a, a standard USB port, it will charge whatever battery is connected to this. Now this radio isn't designed specifically for Meshtastic. This is like a development board where you can do different projects. And basically it's for, for tinkering. Um, but Meshtastic is designed to be basically plug and play. You, you uh, plug your computer into this and then flash the firmware, which is extremely easy to do. There's step-by-step -step instructions on meshtastic.org, um, and it's up and running. Now, this is a uh, TTGO brand, and they did team up with Meshtastic to offer these with the firmware and software already uploaded, so you don't even have to do anything. You can just plug it in, uh, connect to the, the Bluetooth on your phone, and you're up and running. So let's open up the Bluetooth app for this real quick. All right, so this is the app right here. It's available on the Google Play Store. So let's click on that, and it's going to ask for access to the device's location. Uh, I'm going to hit no because it doesn't really matter for this radio. All right, so now it says not connected, select radio below, and it says none because this isn't turned on yet. So this is a fresh install. So let's, uh, let's hook this radio up. And I bought these batteries from batteryhookup.com for like $1.30 a piece. Um, and I was originally going to build an e-bike battery with these, um, but they just don't provide enough power. There are built-in BMSs along the side here. So they have um, overcharge, undercharge, undercharge, over-discharge, whatever you want to call it, uh, protection, and short-circuit protection and everything on these. So these are really, really nice. They're uh, 4,400 milliamp hours. So these are really low draw devices. So 4,400 milliamp hours should last at least a probably about two weeks. Um, and they're actually working on making these more efficient because you can kind of put them to sleep and things like that when you, they're not being used and they'll wake up when they receive a transmission. So they're working on that actively. Uh, but I basically just 
you know, hook this connector up to it and you just plug it into the back of this. So this is the boot up screen and starting, no GPS because this doesn't have GPS enabled, but it does give you a number right here. So F92C. So when you turn on the Bluetooth, you're going to look for F92C on your phone. All right, so this is giving me a notification that you have to turn on high accuracy location. Um, so let's do that now. All right, I had to switch phones real quick here. But you can see this says F92C. And this says F92C. So we're going to click on that. So it, it gives you a code on the on the device. So I'm going to enter that code on my phone and hit pair. And now I have to turn on location. All right. So sometimes it can be a little finicky. You may have to repair it uh, a time or two to get it to work. But now you can see that this is saying F92C, which is the radio number for this. And if you go to people, uh, it says unknown F92C. So now we can go over here to the texting and type something in. I'm going to say hi, and it should come up on this screen. And there it is. So you can see that it connects to the radio, and then this would forward it to any other radios in the network. And there's none on this network yet, so let's hook up another one and get it going. Now I have a second radio. Let's go ahead and plug this one in. So that started. You can see it's got the screen here. You can click this button to cycle through. No GPS module, some uh, number, the amount of time it's been on, and all of that. So now you can see here, it just reached out to this radio and says unknown F92C, signal 98%. So this radio is now talking to that radio. So now when I text something on to my phone and send it to this radio, it should send that to this radio. So now let's say hello. And see it says hello. Hello. So now if I Bluetooth another phone to this radio, it would come through on that phone as well. So let's do that. All right. So now you can see MeshTastic 13E8. And if I pick this radio up and cycle through the screens, these are information. That's the radio it connected to. And this is the radio here. And it says 13E8. So I know that I can connect this radio to this phone. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so a Bluetooth number just popped up here, so I'm going to type that into my phone. 404-348. Okay. So it just connected to the radio through the Bluetooth. I had to shut it off and turn it back on again, and then it connected. And apparently there's an update. I haven't had these on in a little while, but I'm going to ignore that for right now and go to the, the people here. And now you can see there are two radios. So there's 13E8, which is this radio, and F92C, which is that radio. So now if I go to the texting, you can see that the hello came through that I sent earlier from this phone. And now I'm going to say, hi there. And it pops up on this radio. Hi there. Pops up on this radio, says hi there. And now this phone says hi there. So this is all done completely independent of cell service and everything. So that's what's really cool about it. Um, they're they're small. They're very lightweight. They The battery life on them lasts a really long time. They're inexpensive. So now you have a bit of a demonstration under your belt on how this works. Um, it's, it's really easy to set up, like I said. Um, the batteries can be found for very cheap, $1.30 a piece. And then you can just connect them like I did. Um, I'm going to solder these and everything and get them up and running. So now the big question is, how far can it reach? How far can I actually communicate with people? So the theoretical range of LoRa is miles and miles, like dozens of miles. And people have done tests that actually reached that far. So you can see on the screen here of a LoRa range test that was 12.22 kilometers, which is pretty incredible. Uh, here's another example, and this is more urban. Um, you can see the main radio here. And then there's several different radios ranging from 830 meters to 1,530 meters. And through 
several buildings on all of these. So pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Um, I live in a neighborhood with a lot of trees and a lot of houses. So my test so far, the best range that I was able to get, which was basically just winging it and trying it out, was about 2,000 feet, um, just under a half mile, which even still is pretty impressive considering all of the trees and everything that it had to go through. So I'm pretty excited to try out different antennas and see what kind of gain that I can get with directional antennas and be able to reach even further than that. So this is a chart showing just exactly why LoRa is capable of such long ranges. So on the left hand side here the Y axis we have bandwidth and on the X axis we have range. So as you go up in bandwidth typically you reduce the range. So like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, low energy which is capable of video and voice and uh, con consumer internet of things uh, has a very limited range but it has a lot of bandwidth meaning it can carry a lot of data. Uh, likewise cellular is uh, high power so you have to use a lot of power in order to get both the range and bandwidth so if you think of like 4G look at the towers and everything they have to implement and the infrastructure that has to be built in order to get that range and bandwidth that's required. The flip side of this is LoRa, which is an open source technology created by a company called Semtech. And this is very low bandwidth, which is why these radios aren't capable of doing video or voice. But it can do texting fairly well, and it also uses a lot of like sensors for farms, actuators, tags on livestock. Uh, it's very low power and it's inexpensive. So you get a lot of range, but you sacrifice on bandwidth. But it's a trade-off. If you would like to learn more about LoRa beyond what this video is getting into, um, I recommend Andreas Spies. His channel is phenomenal. He goes into very, very deep detail on how LoRa works, and he's got excellent explanations on all of this, and he does a lot of range videos. Uh, this is one that I would recommend. It's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, definitely check out his channel. So one last thing I forgot to mention about these radios is that if you decide to get a radio that has the GPS built into it, they will actually show you on these screens um, what direction you need to travel in order to reach that other person. So um, this circle right here that's right now, it's a, a question mark, it'll actually have an arrow pointing you in the direction of the other person based on your GPS location and their GPS location. And actually the GPS location capability doesn't stop there. Um, there's actually a map button right here and if you press that, it will show you where you are on the map, and it'll show you every other radio in your group on the map. Um, and this right now will use my phone's location, so the GPS location of my phone is what's telling this uh, where the radios are. But if you have the GPS on the radio itself, you don't need the app anymore, and it'll, it'll use just the radio to tell you what, what direction to travel and to find the other people in your group. So this is probably a, a big deal for a lot of people but for me I was just interested in the text capability so I have a few of the TT go uh, they call them T beams that have the GPS module in them I have a few of those on order but for right now I'm just kind of playing with the text capability um, I think it's kind of cool to be able to communicate with zero infrastructure at all so here are two different examples of how a mesh network between radios can be formed um, let's say you have one radio that's up on a hill somewhere um, this radio is going to be able to communicate with all of the radios. So as long as any one of these radios can reach this radio, it's going to forward that information to the other two. So say this is you and you send out a text. As long as you can reach this radio, this radio will forward that text to all of these radios. Um, and even if you were uh, not able to connect to this radio, let's say this connection here was broken, as long as you can reach this radio, you're going to have your information forwarded to this radio, and then this radio will forward it to that radio and that radio. So it's, it's a self-healing mesh network where if a connection is broken, it'll find a different way, if it can, to make contact with um, everyone else. And then down here on the bottom, we have a different example where as long as you have contact with another person or another radio, it will still forward that to the next person and that person will forward it to the next person. Um, this is less efficient because you have to do more packet forwards of that information, but it will still do it. Um, 
I can't remember what the software limits it to. I think it's like three forwards, um, and you can adjust this. So if you had a straight line chain like this, you can you can change it. But basically, um, it's one of these two. You're either going to have multiple connections to different different uh, radios, or you might have a straight line where it's just kind of leapfrogging its way along to get that information to all of the the radios in the network. And I just want to throw out there that all of this is done by the radios. You don't have to do any of this. Um, you saw earlier in the video when I said, oh, it reached out and made contact with this radio. It did that entirely on its own. It was automatic, and I had nothing to do with it. So these, these radios are constantly trying to find connections and doing anything they possibly can to kind of interweb uh, with each other to make those connections. So in an effort to try to optimize the range of these radios, I bought some 915 megahertz tuned antennas that are used for drone racing. And you can tell by the design of these versus the design of this. Uh, this is an omnidirectional antenna, meaning it radiates uh, radio waves in all directions around this. Uh, these are designed to radiate in only one direction uh, specifically and what ends up happening is it, it vastly increases the range in that one direction and, and sacrifices any kind of reception in the other directions and for some applications that's fine like if you have uh, for, a, for a drone it's fine and in my case it's fine too I need to direct it in one direction so I'm planning on trying some of these out um, the, the trick with these is that you have to pay attention to how radio waves are polarized so you can have um, vertical and horizontal polarization and you want to make sure that you match like for like because if you have vertical polarization in one direction and then the radio receiving on the other side is horizontal polarization you're not going to be able to communicate very well. One last thing to mention there are a lot of 3D printable cases on Thingiverse so they have links on meshtastic.org now this one is for the radios that I bought. You can see there's an opening here for the screen. Uh, you feed it in through the top and there's a cap that you can put on here. Um, there is a small hole right here to mount your antenna. And then there's a hole on this end for your radio wire coming out and the USB port right here. So these are kind of cool, um, cheap and easy to print and it's a little bit of protection for your radio. Now I, I took this one step beyond for the batteries that I have and actually just added a rectangular um, case for it with a lid. If I can get that off and one of the batteries actually just slides right in here and then I just kind of on Blender just added this you know right to the side of it kind of joined them together so it's all one piece and then I put a hole uh, right here in the back to be able to feed the power lines through so I don't know something kind of nifty I'll leave uh, if anyone's interested just comment on it and I can uh, upload this to Thingiverse as well. Alright everyone, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. But I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was informational. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.